You can. You can. And, and I think about what I've learned, and I think about my childhood. As I was getting better, my producers asked me to, to, to go to Harpo, to go to Oprah and do this. She was having her 25th anniversary show. And they wanted to know, did I want to do it? Could I do it? I wanted to. I wasn't sure if I could, but they sent a producer with me. And while there, Oprah turned the tables on me. She was doing a show on health crisis and crises, I should say. And she wanted me to. She wanted to. She started interviewing me for that show after I asked her a few questions. And during it, as as only Oprah can, she said, "You know, I I, I just was dumbfounded when I heard that you were so sick and that you needed a bone marrow transplant. And did you think you were going to die?" And immediately I said, no, never. I was incredulous that she would ask that. And then when I came back to Philly, my husband said, at least I wasn't sure you were going to make it. Close friends, cousins, I wasn't sure you were going to make it, please. And Oprah and I had talked about that after. She said, you said so quick, I realized how strong my face was. And it wasn't because um, that, that, that I, I grew up, you know, with this kindredship to any particular religion. My mother was a devout Catholic, and she made all of us go to, I had three brothers, I'm the oldest. She made us all go to Catholic school, and I had my first communion, and we went to catechism. But none of us, as adults, followed Catholicism, but she laid that spiritual foundation for us. You know, the knowledge the innate knowledge that there was something out there bigger than us, that we didn't control our lives, that it was the ends, it, it was up to someone, something more powerful. And I just knew all along that God had another plan for me. I just wasn't sure what it was. I remember reading the book by James Baldwin. The evidence. Uh-oh, I think I hit the... <laughs> Anybody read the evidence of things not seen? James Baldwin? Oh my, my. Faith. Faith was the epistle to the Hebrews. The evidence of things not seen. And I just always had faith that somehow I was going to continue on. I wasn't sure what capacity, but in 2007, I went back to Channel 6 and I reported the news. And I remember when I would go out, people would say, they would come out of their homes and their businesses and see me on the street and we prayed for you, they all told me. And then I thought about the power of prayer. That's the one story I didn't get to do, but it's in the book. And thinking about what I learned, the first thing I learned was don't sweat the small stuff. Because I, I was a real A-type personality. You know, the, when the boys were little, I had like little pads, you know, Lino needs this and Lexa needs this and you gotta do this. I'll make your thought I was crazy. And, you know, I just had to have everything the way it was. I am proud to say that when I left home tonight, I had dirty dishes in my sink. <laughs> I would have never had, <laughs> not everything doesn't have to be in order. I learned that when God sends you a storm, you think, to, he doesn't do it to bring chaos and disruption in your life, sometimes he does it to clear your path. That's right. Come on. I learned that we must like ourselves. Yeah, right. I learned that I must love myself. And that loving has to be internalized. You can't give love until you have love to give. Yeah. And I think about a quote that has always been dear to me for the last, it has to be at least 30 years. Um, that the editor of Essence Magazine, Susan Taylor, 